Jump into the game. Well, this is a very, it's a new map for us. It's got a lot of our new mechanics in play, and you'll see some of these when we get to the map. We have a lot of player, a lot of abilities here. We've got the ability to hide your units from enemies using, using line of sight blockers. There's, of course, the Zanaga Watchtowers, which you can capture, and they're very well situated in this map. It's also a little bit of a smaller map, but there's still powerful chokes you can use to protect yourself, but you can expect it to be a pretty fast and bloody game. Absolutely. It's looking like both of the players have already joined up, and they are ready to get this game underway. All right, game two of the StarCraft II exhibition is about to be underway. Let's hear from you guys. Wow, so down in the left-hand corner of the map, it's looking like we actually have a, uh, a red Protoss. So we have seen the colors switched up because uh, Sonky was the red Zerg last game. And over here in the 12 o'clock position, we do have the blue Zerg. So this is a, uh, a classic matchup on these maps. These players are positioned directly across from one another. It's a very, very uh, fast kind of game that's going to be on this map at this point. And if you look towards the middle of the map, you'll see we have a couple of these Dunlaga Watchtowers in the game once again. Now, both of these Watchtowers will give a lot of vision to both players and control these towers may prove very key. There's a couple of other features to this map that are a little different from Lost Temple. Over here on the left-hand side of the map, you can see there are some rocks in position. If you can destroy these rocks, you can get access into the enemy base. So these are extremely tough, extremely hard to take out, especially in the early game. But once armies become extremely powerful, these are very easy to blow through, which means the map may change shape as the game goes on. If players focus on these rocks, they can open up new holes into the enemy base, allowing you to strike at them from unexpected directions. That's right, and from both of these sides, there's actually uh, rocks, destructible rocks heading up this ramp over here, and another new feature of the terrain in StarCraft II is these line of sight blockers. Whenever you have a unit on the other side, your enemy is going to be unable to see any of the ground forces that you have behind it. Yeah, this can make a real difference, especially for both Zerg and Protoss forces, both of which have a lot of melee units, and really want to make use of those behind the line of sight blocking terrain. Ooh, and both of the players are actually just striking it rich right now. They were able to send their scout right over into the enemy player's base. Very early on, we can see Yellow is able to scout out Sanki's base up here in the top. He's just going to be able to see that what it looks like, Sanki is going for another fast expand all the way down here into the high yield mineral field. And we can see here our resources tab is brought up, and you can see how fast the players are resourcing, both per minute, which is the plus number, and how much they're floating right now, how many resources they have in the bank. Generally speaking, you want to see players keep the amount of resources they're saving really, really low. They want to get as many forces on the field as possible. Spend all of that money the minute it comes in. And now that Overlord, we can see down in the bottom left corner of the map, is able to make it into Yellow's base. So Sanki knows his exact base position, and he sees him with that gateway. We do see one Zealot getting built, but... Yellow was going for uh, some fast gas, so maybe we're going to see a different strategy out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Because we've got two geysers in StarCraft 2 as opposed to StarCraft 1, you can harvest gas twice as quickly in the early game should you choose to. But the geysers do shut down after a short time. They have to re-energize. They have to find additional gas inside them. So they have to go down, and it's up to you to micro your workers off. We've got a little worker battle going on there inside the base, and it looks like the, uh, the probe is going to get away to fight another day. Ooh, and here we go. Yellow making that assault, having only a probe and a zealot in place. Looking like Sanki's going to be going for that surround, but oh, oh those very good just move. able to get out. Yeah, so it looks like he's going to get surrounded, but still, the disruption is still very valid. Even though he's, he may lose those units, he has disrupted the Zerg. There's no resourcing going on right now in that base while he deals with that probe and with that Zealot. So meanwhile, while Sanki is getting very distracted back over at the Protoss player base, we can see that that cybernetics core is in play, and just as we were talking, this is uh, one of those abilities. The assimilator has now ran, ran out of vesting, of harvestable vesting. Right. Yeah. And so it's gone down. When it's red, you need to take your workers off and do something else with them. He forgot them for a little bit there, not quite macroing as fast as he needs to be, but it looks like he's remembered them. He's got them back in action, and he's got them back resourcing once again. So what Yellow needs to do right now is definitely go for that warp gate ability because we saw how strong it was for him in being able to just pump out those stalkers as the game went on. Yeah, it's very, very powerful. Looks like the Zerg are kind of knocking at the Protoss door here. Only a couple of Zerglings moving in, the rest moving back. He doesn't quite have the forces right there in that position to really threaten the Protoss, and so he's going to back away. Oh, and the Zealots not having charge are absolutely going to be unable to catch up to those Zerglings and do any damage to them now. We can see that Yellow does still not have knowledge about this high-yield expansion, which is very important. As the Zerg player goes on, we might be able to see him just plain overwhelm the Protoss player. So this is player. a new feature of StarCraft II. We've got some minerals that are worth more than others. And so these bring back more per trip than they would from the regular crystals. So this allows any player who captures this area to really gain a big economic advantage. But you can see how poorly defended that base was. There's almost no choke point there at all. It's extremely difficult to defend that base. So if anybody comes in that area, you're going to find it a lot harder to hold. 
Oh, I oh know, and it's looking like Yellow's just about to find it. Is the probe going to be able to make it there? Yes, it was able to see the creep on the map. It didn't quite make it to any of the buildings, but I'm sure that Yellow was watching that purple show up on his mini-map. Yeah, I'm sure he knows exactly what's going on over there right now. This is a classic move by the Zerg on this map, and it can be very dangerous for a Protoss player who doesn't move to counter it or doesn't expand on his own. And we can see up on the unit menu, we do only see four Zealots in play compared to 21 Zerglings. It is possible that Sanki might be able to overwhelm Yellow at this point because the ramp is very large. We could see those Zerglings run right by them, but oh, that Photon Cannon is going to be launched down there. And now Sanki knows that he has no chance against that and the Zealots yeah, combined. Yeah, extremely costly for him to try to move through that area. So he's going to back up and rally his forces and see what else he can do to break into that Protoss space. Oh, the Protoss have put down a robotics facility and they put down a, a warp prism. This is a new ability for the Protoss. This is a new unit. It acts like a shuttle and almost every respect except it can deploy to create an area of pylon power which allows the Protoss to warp in anywhere they want really on the battlefield at almost no notice. It's a very powerful way to drop in on an enemy with a sudden surprise, especially effective with units like Immortals or more importantly Dark Templar. However, it just looks like Yellow's going to be using it to scout around and probably try to get, oh, it's looking like he's going to be going for a backdoor pylon. Yeah, that's kind of strange considering he's got the War Prism, which will already give him the ability to put the pylon in play. But it looks like he's going to try it anyway, move to the back there and see what kind of damage he can do. Maybe he's planning on trying to hide some photon cannons back there as well. Ooh, and now Yellow going for another one of the new units that we have here in StarCraft II, the Colossus. This is especially strong against any ground forces. Yeah, it has a very powerful ability to walk up and down cliffs. In addition, the Colossus has a powerful beam that sweeps back and forth across the battlefield that can do terrible, terrible damage to units like Zerglings. And there's that pylon and there's those photon cannons oh. that we were talking about it it looks like he's really going into position here going to create a little uh, barrier in the back of the of the zerg base create a little position that he can defend and presumably continue to warp in units meanwhile at the front it looks like the zerg made a little abortive attempt there to attack but it didn't quite work out and they're moving away back towards the middle while the protoss continue to use that choke point and their zealots to hold the line now seeing all those cannons get built in the back of the base i wasn't sure that how he was going to use that phase that warp prism but now we know exactly what he's doing he's building down a pylon to have a little backup Maybe he's going to try spreading out his defenses a little more with that warp prism. Wow, this is really a sneaky move. It looks like the Zerg player is completely unaware of what's going on. He has no idea the danger that's going on in the back. Of course, the Protoss, not, the Zerg may not be aware either that there's a Colossus right up on that cliff just waiting for his Zerglings to get close. And if he's able to get close enough, we will see that large beam get thrown down very shortly. Oh! oh and now another feature about the Colossus is that they're actually able to walk directly up and down cliffs. No problem. Yeah, and you can see now he's on the attack, moving out across the map, seeing what he can find. Oh, man, it looks like the Protoss are really doing their thing back there. If he had a little more creep, he might be a little safer, but he doesn't. Oh, the Zerg have seen the threat now. What can they do? Are they going to be able to get in there with the Zerg to do enough damage? It's a large Zerg force, but this will be extremely costly for the Zerg. Now we're going to need to see Sanki actually move in on those photon cannons, not on that pylon because that phase prism, the warp prism is the one providing all of the power right now. It's looking like those Zerglings going straight for that pylon are just getting taken out too fast. There are still three more photon cannons up. Only two remaining. All those Zerglings, will they be able to take them down? Another photon cannon finishes oh, no. off. We do see a few more Zerglings able to play. Whoa! And we've got three more cannons finishing off and Saki now no longer has any defenses. Oh, what a tough break for the Zerg player. He wasn't obviously quite as aware as he needed to be. StarCraft moves so fast and he forgot that that 